after countless months of working on my computer, taking binary trees and inverting them, and link lists and reversing them, I finally got an internship at Amazon, and this is how it went. All right, so let's start with what everybody wants to know about, the money. How much did Amazon pay their interns in the summer of 2020? Now, to start off with, the amount of money that you'll get paid actually depends on where you work. And now what I mean by that is that Amazon has offices basically everywhere. They have offices in New York, they have offices in Texas, they have offices in Seattle. And so, depending on where you work, the amount of money that you will get compensated will be different. And now, I was supposed to work in the Seattle office. I didn't actually get the chance to go because of the whole pandemic, but I still got paid the same amount as if I was living and working in Seattle. And so now, the amount for an intern working in the Seattle office was actually $7,933 a month for the salary, which is extremely competitive, and it was way more money than I had ever seen before in my life. So I was, I was doing pretty well. Now the other thing that Amazon also offered us was a relocation stipend. And now this was money that was meant to be used for any costs that were gonna be incurred in moving up to Seattle. And so because we didn't actually get to move uh, that money, because it was already deposited to us, we actually just got to keep. And so that was an extra $6,932 that were given to us as well that we just got to keep. Aside from the salary and the relocation stipend, Amazon also gave us a couple of other things. So they gave us $75 to use at the Amazon store, uh, which was essentially a, like a merch shop where you could buy t-shirts, uh, mugs, different kinds of clothing. Uh, it was a bunch of like Amazon themed stuff. I think I got a couple shirts and a little bento box for my girlfriend. So it was pretty nice stuff. And aside from that, they also sent their interns a MacBook Pro, a 16 inch MacBook Pro, which we had to return at the end, but we got to use it through the entire entirety of the internship. They sent us a wireless headset and they also sent us a keyboard so that we could use that along with our MacBook Pros. And oh, as well, what the other thing that they sent us was a about a 40 inch uh, LCD monitor, which was fantastic. I, I have this monitor back here, which is about 27 inches, which is nice, but having a 27 inch and a 40 inch monitor was just fantastic. My workflow was off the charts because of it. Now, the last perk that Amazon gave its interns was actually 10% off any item that was shipped and sold by Amazon on Amazon.com. And now this was actually really nice. I, I bought a quite a bit of things off of Amazon using my employee discount and that 10% came in quite handy. It was, it was a nice perk to have. But yeah, aside from all the stuff that I mentioned before, basically every intern got the same thing, the same standard base salary, the same relocation stipend, and the same perks and benefits for working at Amazon. Now stock options is another thing that people talk about getting compensated with at big tech companies. But as interns, you actually don't get any stock options. But if you do well enough, which I will talk about later in the video about how I did well enough to get a full-time offer. But if you get a full-time offer to work at Amazon, they will include stock options in your offer letter. So you have that to look forward to if you do well at your internship. Stop right there. Now this is when YouTube usually tells me that my viewers click off of my videos. And I'm not gonna allow that this time, so you gotta keep watching. But if you're interested in watching something else about Amazon, I have a video on my YouTube channel about the resume that got me my Amazon internship. So if you'd like to check that out, I will put that probably up here. And I will also put the link in the description so you can check that out as well. All right, now keep watching the video. All right, so what was my experience like actually working at Amazon over the summer? So the first thing that I actually had to do was meet up with my manager and my mentor for the summer. And those meetings were about two to one month before my internship actually started. And this was basically just for me to get to know what team I I'd be working on, the kind of things that I could maybe study and kind of get familiar with before actually starting at the internship. And also just getting to know my mentor and my manager who I'd be working with for the next three months. And now the actual application that I worked on during my internship was called Amazon Free Time. And I believe now it's called Amazon Kids. Uh, I believe it got rebranded since the time I was there, uh, but I need to double check that. But essentially what it was is a catalog of children's movies, books, TV shows, and YouTube videos all served up on a Netflix kind of style application uh, that you could download on your iOS, Android device, or on any Amazon products such as like the Kindle Fire. So my team in particular worked on the backend web services for the Amazon free time application. 
Now we were tasked with essentially delivering the correct data to the user based off of their subscriptions, what content they wanted their child to see or not see, and the settings on their device. Now, aside from the application in general, I actually had to choose between three different projects to work on throughout my entire internship. And now all three of them were fairly interesting and they all involved very different things, but in the end I ended up deciding on essentially adding a new row of content to the Amazon free time application. Now this row would act similar to Netflix's watch next row where we would essentially tell the user or give to the user content that they hadn't finished watching just yet that we wanted them to continue watching or to finish watching. And now Netflix's version of this involves a lot of more of like machine learning recommendation kind of algorithms to give that information to the user. But ours was meant to be a lot simpler since it's kind of geared towards children. We just wanted essentially if content was not finished, we wanted the child to be able to see that so that they can continue watching and they didn't necessarily have to surf through the application a second time or a third time uh, to find content that they were watching before. Now in order to complete this project, I actually had to work extensively with my team, my manager, and my mentor. And I met up with them fairly regularly. Now basically every Amazon engineer is going to have to have a stand-up meeting every single day with their team. And these are meant to be 15 minute meetings just to catch up on what each person is working on. Now my team usually never stuck to 15 minutes because we had quite a bit of stuff to talk about since we were working on many different projects at the same time. And so they usually took a little bit longer, but those were always beneficial because I got to see what other people were working on and I could present my questions whenever I felt confident enough to pose my question to the entire team. And the other thing that really helped was the fact that I had a daily meeting with my mentor every single day. And these tended to be about between 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how much help I needed. And yeah, I could talk to my mentor basically about anything about my project, some struggles that I was having, if I had any questions, or just uh, for some guidance if I needed some help. Now, another thing that I also had was a meeting twice a week with my manager just to talk about more of the interpersonal parts of my internship, working with my team members, my relationship with different members, um, if I needed any help just understanding the culture, understanding more about the team and how the team worked, and yeah, and if I just needed any more kind of personal help. Now one thing that I actually didn't expect from the projects, all of them sounded fairly simple and like like most coding projects, you go in thinking this, this is a very simple idea, I could get this done with plenty of time to spare. Uh, but really, right away you see why it takes a team to develop and keep these applications up to date. There is a lot of logic and a lot of organization and a lot of thought that's been put into how the application works and how to get data from one point to another. Just getting familiar with the code base and the lingo for all the different pieces of data that we use took quite a bit of time and that didn't even take into account having to work with external teams and having to work on somebody else's schedule and having to onboard external APIs and stuff like that. All that stuff took a ton of time and it was quite of a quite a shock for me when I first uh, started experiencing that on my internship. But aside from that, the experience was very, very good and my mentor helped me out a ton, my entire team helped me out a ton and eventually I got the entire project done. Albeit it could have been a lot better, it could have run a lot faster, been more efficient, but we had a finished product and something that we could iterate on in the future if we wanted to expand on it further. <clears throat> All right, quick wardrobe change. Now the last thing I'm gonna talk about is two things that I think I did really well in during my internship that actually helped me to secure my full-time offer to go back and work at Amazon. So now both of these kind of pertain to the same thing, which is communication skills, but they're two sides of the same coin. So the first thing is my communication with product managers or people that didn't necessarily have an interest in the code or the technical side of my code. Now, before my internship, I had spent two years working as a tutor at my local community college, basically helping people who were just getting started coding and had no experience with any of the technical side of code. Now, I feel that this was super beneficial for me because I had a lot of experience taking very difficult technical concepts and explaining it to laymen and people who didn't necessarily know anything about code. And now this was super helpful when it came to talking to product managers because they were basically the same thing. They knew the business objectives of my project, but they didn't necessarily care about the technical technical side of my code or the like logic of what I was writing. They wanted to know how my code was going to help them meet their business objectives. 
And so whenever I had these meetings with my pro with my product manager, I felt that I did a really good job of explaining what I was working on, what I was researching, and the teams that I was working with to deliver my end product. Now the second thing that I did was communicating with my team. Now this was a lot more technical, but the main thing I think I did really well with was asking a lot of questions. And now I know people tend to think that if you ask a lot of questions, you're gonna essentially show people that you don't know what you're doing and that they're gonna not wanna hire you because they want someone who knows how to do everything. Well, that's not the case. Asking questions is a fantastic way for you to become a more productive member of your team. And initially for me, I had a hard time getting around to that. And so initially I would basically block myself and take a lot longer to solve my problems because I was too scared to ask a question. But once I got pretty comfortable with my team and I started asking a lot more questions, I was able to unblock myself faster and get more work done and be more productive with my project. And so I think that was one thing that my team really liked about me was that I just was eventually just not scared to ask questions. And I was more concerned with unblocking myself and being able to move on to the next thing instead of having to sit with myself, just trying to figure it out myself and not unblocking myself. All right, so that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed listening to me talk about my Amazon internship experience, please make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be putting out a lot more fun content this year, so you have that to look forward to. If you'd like to learn more about the resume that actually got me into this internship at Amazon, I'll have a link in the description for that video. Please make sure to smash the like button on that one as well. And yeah, I will see you guys next week for my next video. See ya.